everyone and welcome to another review from Colour with Claire. Today I'm reviewing Johanna Basford's World of Flowers. It's her brand new book that we've all been waiting for for what seems like such a long time now, watching Johanna's sneak peeks and spoilers on her Instagram and of course her most recent flip through of the entire book. I know that some of you have been trying to keep spoiler free, so if you don't want to see what's inside you should stop watching now, uh, but if you do want to have a look through the book fully with me, some of it for the first time really because I didn't look at the entire flip through myself I wanted to keep a little bit back to have the first sort of experience when I had the book in my hands so some of it I won't have actually seen before either. Now the book I have to show you today is the US copy there are slight differences between the UK and the US copies uh, this US copy features a blush pink background in the centre here and it also has fold out French flaps whereas the UK version has a removable dust jacket and no blush pink to the front. I actually prefer the American copies, the UK, uh, the US copies because they do have this flap. I don't particularly like dust jackets that come off and get dog-eared and slip around so that's just my personal preference. Uh, so if I was going to choose I would go for the US edition. Now the US edition is released on the 23rd of October and the UK is the 25th of October so very very soon uh, this is going to be in all of your hands and I can't wait to see what you make of it. So we do have the US copy here as I say, it has the blush pink on the cover, it also has beautiful rose gold foiling that's almost bronze, it's a very deep, very lovely kind of deep peachy colour and then on the back we have the monochrome completely matte cover so you can colour all of this in if you wanted to I know quite a lot of you have coloured your Johanna Basford covers before I coloured my Magical Jungle and my Lost Ocean cover and that turned out really nicely but it's totally up to you if you want to do that but the option is there so without further ado let's get into the book so I did just show you the French flaps you can see we do have colourable flowers on the side of the flap here which opens up to a longer scene, lots of flowers growing up from the bottom, you've got some white space at the top here for you to possibly do a sky or a background if you wanted to, that's totally up to you, or you can just leave it white. We then have the title page which is a beautiful sort of sphere shape in the middle and it's just flowers growing all the way around and they're quite big blooms these ones, so these would be particularly good if you want to practice blends or something that you need a little bit more room for that you don't necessarily want to do later on in the book. So this is a really good practice page, I think. We then have the copyright details page, which again has something to colour for you on here. You could cover this up, you could draw over it, you could completely black it out and colour the flowers. It's totally up to you. If you want to personalise that page, you can. And here we have the nameplate page, which on my copy was actually written in by Johanna and I've got a little message from her there. And as you can see, I have coloured it. I used poly, no, not poly, Prismacolor pencils for this one. I will be using some of the polychromos that Johanna sent through with the gift box, but I did want to use Prismas for this particular piece because I wanted it to be very, very light, very girly, very sort of dusky pink, purpley coloured, and you can only really find those colours um, in the Prismas, not in the polys, so that's why I chose Prismas for this. But the paper is absolutely beautiful. It's Johanna's um, signature paper, you, you would have seen in Ivy and the Inky Butterfly if you own that. It's a very light, delicate ivory colour, and it is really, really thick. So it's going to be perfect for you to use with pretty much any medium apart from your, you know, your alcohol inks and things like that. So this introduction is obviously written by Johanna herself. It's just telling you that this book was inspired by her grandmother who was a gardener and an artist and it says that when her grandma came across a flower that she hadn't found before she'd look it up in her botanical reference book and then delicately colour in the black and white illustration printed in the book to match the specimen she'd found. So really, it, it seems like Johanna's whole inspiration for black and white art, monochrome art, and then obviously moving into the colouring of that art, it really does stem back from seeing her grandma do this to her own botanical volumes. So it's, it really is a whole kind of family childhood inspiration, I feel. 
Uh, she says, I love the way her books became a colourful tale of flowers of her life. We can't travel the world in search of rare orchids or exotic blooms, but we can still let our imaginations run wild. This book contains hundreds of blooms for you to bring to life, some real, some imagined, and an inky mix of the two. Grab your pens and pencils, start adding colour to the pages, and let's go on a petal-packed adventure together. So that's just a lovely little introduction from Johanna there. Now we have her tips. So she's letting you know that pencils are the most versatile medium, which of course we know they are because you can blend and layer um, much, much easier than you can do with markers. I mean, I know you can do it with alcohol markers, but it's not really suitable for this kind of book. Pens are more vibrant, but a little less forgiving. Um, if you're using pens, try them on the test pages at the back of the book first, just in case they bleed through, because you would not want to ruin one centimetre of this book. It is beautiful. Uh, always slip a sheet or two of blank paper behind. This acts as a cushion and it prevents indentation or transfer of ink. Uh, I believe there's a little bit of transfer here. Uh, you might be able to just see that under the word introduction from where I was colouring here. So I should have followed that advice and put some paper behind. For colour inspiration, you can visit a garden or garden centre, look at photographs online, or use your imagination and make it up as you go along. Don't forget to share with the hashtag World of Flowers when you've completed a piece, and uh, go on her website for more tips. And even though this is a lot of text, it's quite text heavy, you still have a really nice thick border on both pages for you to colour in, and uh, you know if you're wanting to finish and complete the whole book. So here we have our first actual proper illustration from the book and this is a double page spread. You'll notice as with Johanna's books recently there is nothing in that spine for you to get worried about tackling and trying to get into. Johanna's really made a conscious effort to keep the spine clear so um, yeah thanks for that Johanna it really does help us colorists. Now you can see there's lots and lots of different flowers on this page it seems to be like a wildflower meadow because it's not all of the same thing. Um, so this is just absolutely lovely. You can obviously put your backgrounds in this blank space, maybe do a sky, a, bit, a few birds or anything you want really. Um, again, there's a lot of larger spaces on here for you to practice your blending. And um, it's just, I think it's a, a good beginner's page, this one. It's a good one to get into the book, get your teeth stuck into before you move into anything more intricate. So here is one of Johanna's signature spherical images. Again, there's lots of blooms with that larger kind of um, area for you to colour and there's lots of smaller areas as well. Uh, these look like hydrangeas, um, pansies maybe, but again, it's not always um, able, to, we're not always able to identify the flowers because she might have just made them up. So don't, don't always try and identify every single flower, just go with it. Now this page is one of my absolute favourites. It's tiny little pots of succulents. Now, I don't know whether I've actually shown you my most recent friends that have come to join me on my colouring desk. I'll just get them for you now. This is, stuck to the desk. This is Spike. <laughs> this is Spike here. This is Prickle and this is Buzz bought them from Ikea as a three set and my kids have even labelled them so here's Spike, here's Prickle and here's Buzz. So I absolutely love little bits of uh, succulents, little plants that you can keep around. Might not necessarily be able to cope with um, bigger plants or ones that require a lot of maintenance but a few cactuses, a few succulents on your desk, it really does cheer you up and uh, well it does me anyway. So there you go, you've met my new three friends. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's why I love this page. I love little plants and little details. Um, I think plants are so, so amazing. Plants and flowers, you know, it's, it's incredible that nature has actually created the most amazing, intricate designs, um, some of them geometrical, and it's just it's incredible. So to have those on a really small scale in a little pot and just see, see that incredible detail in, in miniature, so to speak. I just love succulents. Anyway, we'll move on. So here we have a really fun page. This one shows lots of flowers growing and stemming out of pencils. So this is a real kind of colorist's page. Uh, you could do all your pencils different colors and the flowers to match. It's totally up to you how you do it. It's just really, really fun. Here we've got a wreath of flowers. 
this is going to be one that I'm going to actually draw something in the middle of. So I'm kind of a little bit, uh, a little bit of trepidation about that, but uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun to experiment because I do like the blank space left where you can really incorporate anything you want in the center there. Now, before we move on, I know that a lot of you have been um, talking about the fact that it is, again, a lot of leaves and flowers, which Johanna is, of course, very um, noted for. That is her signature. And um, I just want to say that I think this book is different. I don't think it's it's what you maybe think it's going to be. It's not just flowers. It's not just flowers. There's a lot of other elements that Johanna has incorporated into the book. And I'll be showing you that as we go on and on. Um, which anybody would like to colour. It doesn't matter whether you're sick of leaves and flowers, there's still a lot of other things in this book for you to colour. So anyway, this double page spread is actually the uh, spread of flowers that Johanna used for her 30 days of, of flowers challenge, just make sure I get that right. And um, it's something that I've actually fallen back on, um, or fallen behind on rather, while I've been a bit poorly. So I think I'm probably gonna finish off the rest of the flowers in, in the book at some point, but you can see, you probably recognize each and every single one here. And this is kind of what I mean about the whole different elements to just leaves and flowers. So this gorgeous perfume bottle is just completely and utterly decorated with the most beautiful ornamental flowers and this ornamental butterfly here. Lots of different details. We've got little pearls, um, even in the, the lid of the, the bottle, the cap of the bottle, I'm not sure what you call it, The um, you know what I mean. We've even got flowers sort of growing in the glass, which I think is going to be awesome to, to try and colour and try and get that effect. And we've got a little bit of a frame on here as well, but there's lots of room around it if you want to incorporate other little perfume bottles. Maybe just do a silhouette of it being on a table full of bottles. It's totally up to you, but there is a lot of scope for imagination in this book. I know I'm doing a lot of talking here and not really getting on with it, but I just want to say that um, if you have a book that has a lot of theme to it, for instance, with Ivy and the Inky Butterfly, there was obviously a big theme running through that and you might have felt sort of like maybe you had to follow what the story said to colour the, the items um, in, you know, and the scenes with what was happening in the story. But I think this book, just being flowers, it gives you a lot more scope for your imagination to sort of run wild because you're thinking, okay, I've got a, a pot of flowers here and what else can I do to this to make it different, to make it unique? And it, I think it's really going to spark a lot of creativity, this book. I particularly like this one because it's quite oriental. We've got what I believe are some sort of lily here. Um, I know what these are called, but I can't remember. But I do like this. It's quite oriental, quite exotic. And you do have the cherry blossom, the Sakura border here as well. So you could really play with that oriental colour theme as well. Here we've got a very detailed double page spread of flowers and pots and oh, all sorts, which you would find in a florist's office or workspace. We've got, um, you know, we've got garden fork and, and trowel. We've got the watering can, plant pots, bottles of potions and lotions to make all your plants grow. Um, we've got one of these little wind thing, windmills here that go around in the wind. We've got bags of seeds and we've got um, ribbon and scissors and twine and just all these different little bits that are just, this is going to be really, really fun to colour and just make this look like a gardener's dream. We've even got a radio here while you're gardening, you can listen to your favourite station. Just really, really love this. Here we've got one of the more kind of wallpaper type pages, which a lot of people are very fond of. Um, you can see it's a repeat pattern. There's not too much to say about it, really. And on this one, we have four different spheres of flowers. And again, it's just sparking that idea of what can I do with this? You know, I'm thinking portholes ships portholes with flowers growing through you know there's all sorts you could do here we've got a wooden box just bursting bursting with flowers and then on this page another kind of um symmetrical design with um these larger flowers and then these tulip kind of flowers in the middle and a couple of butterflies as well 
Here we've got a couple of framed pieces. So you can see that we have quite large leaves here. That would be good for practicing your leaf blending. And these leaves are very, very odd. They almost look like aloe vera. So again, it's up to you how you color them. This looks like honeysuckle. I could be wrong, I'm no good at flowers. This here is another one, a bit like the perfume bottle, but this is a bell jar full of flowers. It almost looks like Claire Holloway said in her video, like a snow globe. So you could even incorporate that. Make it Christmassy, do it in palettes of red and green or palettes of blue and pink, very light and icy. And you know, make it look like a snow globe. It's totally up to you. I know I keep saying that, but it really is. Everybody's gonna have a different take on this. Uh, again, we've got some shelves here with pots and um, different kinds of vases. So this is again, bringing in more elements for you to think about, different patterns on the vases, different sizes and shapes. <clears throat> so Johanna likes to do little books, sometimes in her book, and you can see here that we have a large sort of scarab beetle that's absolutely covered in flowers and a rather more unusual looking one on this side, again color, uh, covered with lots of leaves and fronds. So here we've got a wallpaper type design again, and then here is a beautiful lantern kind of page. It's instead of having flowers growing up from the bottom, we've actually got them hanging down. So you can imagine like a sprawling tree, huge tree with all of these really large blossoms hanging down. And each one is actually a little house or a little lantern, which is really, really whimsical. Next, we've got another wreath page, but this one isn't as full of blooms as you'd usually find. It's very, very thin, uh, the border, and it gives you a lot of room to add on your own flowers or leaves, and of course, to do anything you wanna do in the center. This is a little page full of uh, bunches of flowers. So we've got smaller bunches and a larger bunch, and it's, again, it's quite wallpapery. This one reminds me of a page in, I think Secret Garden it was, with the big, big plant pots. Um, and as you can see, there are all different flowers growing out of them. But my absolute favorite part of this page is this cute little snail here. He's actually got flowers growing out of his shell. Very sweet. This is what I think a, a florist's van would look like on steroids, <laughs> or plant grow, rather. Um, you can see that all the flowers have just burst out of their packaging and they are taking over uh, this car here. Uh, they're even growing out of the, the passenger and the driver's side windows, <laughs> which I think is quite dangerous for delivering your flowers, but still, it's a beautiful illustration. And again, we've got some shelving here, so you can imagine this being in a little greenhouse. Loads of ivy crawling down. Uh, we've got cactuses, I think. Um, little lily pad type uh, leaves here. We've got an apple. Um, we've got little tiny placards telling you what each flower is. Um, yeah, just lovely. Th that's the kind of watchword for this book. It is just lovely. The colours, the the um, the cover, the, the rose gold kind of peachy blush pinks. I just love it. So here we've got another spherical design, very similar to the flamingo um, design, which I think was in Magical Jungle, and also the owl that was in Enchanted Forest. So we have a border here, circular border with the, your leaves growing out of it, but we have a fish in the middle. Uh, so you could be coloring this with pond kind of colors, very blue and green and reflective. Uh, I have done a, um, a tutorial for doing a reflective background or a kind of a movement of water. So you could do that in here if you wanted. This is almost like a mandala type illustration. It is square, but it's still got circular elements within it. And um, every single sort of line of the mandala as you go outwards is completely different from the last. So this will be a, a really interesting one to color. And I think to see finished, I think I'm, I'm interested to see what people do with that page. This one is very akin to the Wonder Room from Ivy and the Inky Butterfly. There's loads of different elements on this to color. And again, it's not just flowers. People keep thinking it's gonna be, oh, it's flowers and leaves again, but there's so much more to this book. Look at this here. It looks like a little rain machine uh, that's kind of, what we've got is we've got the flowers growing in here, the, the cloud dripping water onto them to feed them, and then coming out through these tubes, doing its process, whatever it is, it's very scientific. 
we've got flowers again here and then it comes out and drips into these bottles so it's like a perfume making a perfume from flowers it's just absolutely I mean the the thought that's gone into this and the, I don't know where these ideas have come from but just lovely you can see we've got flowers here dripping scent into the into a bottle there's all sorts of bits that's probably it's going to be when you actually color it that you realize what they are and you come across every single little detail but I just I, I adore it as with all of Johanna's books we always have a heart and this is the heart for this book and this is oh, I know the name of this but I can't remember uh, it's a beautiful flower and you can see we've got some tulips growing up we've got again another bottle uh, with patterns on and this kind of looks like a funnel again we're funneling the the scent from these flowers as it's dripping down into these bottles another wallpaper type page and again a kind of wreath but this one is kind of side heavy down here so it's got larger blooms all the way up this side and then very very delicate tiny blooms on this side we have a ribbon page a lot of people like to do their own background work on this but i think it would look super special just colored in and left with the white background i think it would look really delicate and pretty here we've got a, a spherical design it has lots and lots of flowers incorporated into it and I really love these tiny little leaves as well another page that I'll be very interested to see how people interpret this one is absolutely crackerjack full of flowers very little details so you might need to get your little magnifying glass out for this and your fine liners um, but again I know a lot of people do adore that kind of heavy detail so there's one for you there this is a page of very much larger blooms, so if you do struggle with smaller areas, maybe you struggle with your eyesight, or you just want to practice um, bigger leaves and bigger petals, this is a really good spread. Here we've got a square frame of flowers. This one here is that weird flower that looks like a monkey, isn't it? I can't quite see it on here, but I, I have seen it before. It's a very, very funny flower. Uh, and then we've got another sphere here with a peacock inside, or what looks like a peacock. It might be, um, might be a pea hen, because I can't see any large feathers coming out, but it's some, something of that variety anyway. Again, I'm getting a really oriental theme with this as well. Gosh, I thought there was two pages there. That's how thick it is. Uh, we've got a sphere wreath here. I do love saying the word sphere. <laughs> uh, it's a wreath. Again, it's full of flowers. What can you say? It's beautiful. And this is um, a square border, which is kind of bursting with detail. It does remind me a little bit of the, the panda. Uh, was it a panda or a tiger or both that was in one of Johanna's previous books? And it had a square kind of bamboo border like this. We have another ribbon page. This one's a bit more straighter and thicker across the page. We've then got this gorgeous uh, bordered page, which really reminds me of Ivy and the Inky Butterfly. There's so many different elements to this. You've got flowers growing in this bit, and then different flowers growing in this bit, and different flowers growing in this bit. And it is, it's gonna take a lot of work, that one, but it's gonna look beautiful when it's done. And I've just pricked myself on spike. <laughs> I've gotta watch what I'm doing. Um, this gorgeous round illustration again. I love my spheres, I do. Um, there's lots of different flowers on this, both on the border, on the inside, and then to the center where you have a flower growing out in spikes. Just lovely. This is like different panels, so kind of maybe art deco. There's a lot of scroll work, uh, scroll work rather, with just the one flower featured in the center. This one again reminds me of a pond. It's round, it's got the lily pad type flowers in it and the really large, very, very large leaves, very jungly. And this one here, it's got lots and lots of vine kind of detail on it. These sort of disco ball flowers and a lovely butterfly in the center. We've got wallpaper type repeat pattern spread over a double page. And we've got a very large flower that's got loads of little shapes inside it for you to colour in. Uh, totally up to you whether you want to block colour those or do some tiny blends in them. It's going to look beautiful whatever happens. Here we've got some more bugs. I like making bugs look like gems so I might attempt that on here. I particularly love this little one here. It does look like a bee um, and it's very sort of furry and, and frilly and just beautiful. 
this illustration sort of comes in from the top corner and uh, doesn't fill the page but it it's just lovely it reminds me of the um ivy and the inky butterfly where she has flowers growing out of her her head uh, it sort of reminds me of that for some reason now here is one of my favourite pages, it's lovely. It's what you'd imagine a little fairy or a little gnome to live in. Uh, it's a very tiny little house. It's got large mushrooms and toadstools and flowers growing as large as the roof and even longer. And I just, I just love anything like that. I love my whimsical designs. So here we've got a very similar to the illustrated manuscript pages in Ivy. Everything has got its own little section with a border in between. Uh, we've got, I love these flowers. They remind me of um, those light shades that you get in Ikea. I don't know whether you've seen those. I'll try and find a picture <laughs> if I remember. Um, and we've got just, just again, just different flowers in their own little sort of section. I really like the long ones mixed with the different shapes. I just love it. So here we've got something very similar to the nameplate page. Uh, it's a very nice little delicate illustration centered on the page. This one is huge. It almost looks like those succulents we were talking about at the start of the book, but on a much larger scale. Here we've got a gorgeous butterfly, lovely and intricately designed on a background of wildflowers. And again, this is almost diamond shaped, this one. It's a really nice shape to it. And I think that this is symmetrical. Yeah, I think it's symmetrical. I really like this particular one because it looks so totally different to anything Johanna's done before. It does not look to be in her style whatsoever, but I love that. I love that she's experimenting with different styles. It really does remind me of quite folksy, um, you know, you get these books that are um, a little bit Norwegian, I think, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking. Um, and they do have that kind of style to them where everything is separate and everything is um, almost childlike in, in, its, in its simplicity. But it's very, very nice. I love it. And again, the skull. I do love skulls. Johanna does love doing a skull as well. This one is almost like a sugar skull face made of flowers with this huge... Um, floral headdress and a little spider hanging down, love it. Again, very similar to the Ivy and the Inky Butterfly with these scrolling borders. We've got another house, another house, and loads of toadstools and flowers growing up. I do actually love this little chimney that's, that's uh, growing out of the house here, it seems like. Oh, we've reached the end. Oh my God, I could have gone on forever, believe me. And we've got a little end plate here, as you can see. So we started it with your name and then we're finishing it with another kind of plate. We've then got the colour palette test page, which is on both sides for you to test any of your different mediums so they don't bleed through. And then at the back, we have a fold out scene. And this is just a, an entire garden. So you've got your potting shed, your little plant pots, you've got flowers growing absolutely everywhere. How lovely would it be to live in a garden like this? I would just stay in the garden all day or at least be looking out the window all day anyway. This would be absolutely lovely. I've got a lot of artificial grass and stone on my garden, so I would absolutely love to have a garden like this. And on the back of that, we've got another little scene, but this is more contained. So what I'm thinking is this is daytime. And this is nighttime in a smaller section of the garden because you've got your la little lamp here. Uh, and I just imagine this to be a night scene. Now this is a fold out and it's also perforated. So I don't know if you can see that there, but it's perforated at the edge. You can remove that and color it probably more easier than you would be able to color it in the book and probably find a nice frame for that. I can imagine it being a beautiful piece of artwork at the end. Now we have the back cover, which is again, French flaps. And again, you can colour it and we have all of her previous promotional um, little thumbnails here for our previous books. And that's it. It's 80 pages long. It is double sided, as you have seen. It's 25 by 25 centimetres and it's just stunning. I love it. It's a work of art. It really is. And you can just see that Johanna's heart and soul has been poured into this. I know that she loves her flowers best of all and it really does show that she's enjoyed making this. So this mammoth review, I know it's been super long, I'm sorry for going on, 
Um, but do let me know in the comments what you think of the book, if you've pre-ordered it. If you're going to pre-order it, the links will be in the description below. Um, and what your favourite page is, I would love to know. Uh, I will be doing a colour along in this book at some point. I do have a lot on the schedule at the moment, but I will definitely be doing that. So please give this video a thumbs up because I've talked myself horse doing it, so I deserve a little thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for sticking with me through this review and I will see you soon on Colour with Claire.